From the previous video, we had arrived at um, this equation over here. And uh, after that, we had basically tried to simplify this equation. So those simplifications were sine of theta and how we can write partial p by partial s as a dp by ds and how we can basically go ahead and simplify the streamwise acceleration component as well um, by um, inputting this into the right hand side of the equation. So once we do that, this equation becomes minus gamma into dp by dz minus partial p by partial s becomes dp by ds and on the right hand side this equation becomes 1 by 2 into a row from here into v square in here divided by ds. So this is how we simplified, um, sorry, this was minus gamma into dz by ds here. Yeah, okay. All right, so dz by ds here. Now we've got ds here and that we can eliminate from this in equation throughout. Uh, and we can bring this to the left-hand side of the equation as well. So simplifying this, it would become, um, or I can move these two onto the other side and they would become positive. So this term over here is going to become dp plus, and this term over here I can write as the second term and it is going to become 1 by 2 rho into d v square and the third term this one is going to become gamma into dz and this is equal to 0 now I can simplify this equation even further by uh, by dividing this equation throughout with the density so this would become dp divided by rho which is density plus 1 by 2 into and what I can do is I can take the integral as well throughout so this would become integral of dp by rho plus 1 by 2 and integral and derivative is going to get cancelled out, so it's going to be 1 by 2 into v square plus um, dividing gamma by density is going to become, because this is equal to rho g, so it's going to become g into integral of dz, which would be z, equal to the constant that is going to be on this side now because we have taken the integral so it's going to be equal to some constant here and this is the constant which is going to be along the streamline or uh, if I was to simplify this equation by assuming that I'm only looking at incompressible flows then uh, for incompressible flows the density would be constant. So that means for the first term this density can move out of the integral and this would become integral of dp which is going to be equal to pressure p or I can again multiply this equation throughout with density to write it in the notation that we usually see of Bernoulli's equation being used and this is going to be equal to pressure multiplied by half rho into v square plus gamma into z which is equal to constant along the streamline. And this is the notation or the equation that we usually know 
as the Bernoulli's equation. It's a really powerful equation, but we have to be careful with what assumptions we are using. Otherwise, if we apply it to some flow situation without, uh, you know, taking into account what assumptions are being used, it may not work out as you would imagine that it would. We have to remember that the assumptions were that the viscous effects are negligible or are being assumed negligible. The flow is steady in 2D. Also, at this point, the flow is incompressible as well now. And this equation is only applicable along the streamline. So across the streamline or normal to the streamline, the equation would be different. So this is the equation that is valid, the Bernoulli's equation along the streamline. Across the streamline, the or normal to the streamline, the equation is this one. I'm not going to go into the derivation of it, but we have to be careful with uh, how we are applying this equation, whether we are applying it across the streamline or applying it along the streamline. Uh, we also have to rem remember the assumptions, like I said, uh, that we've made. And then, um, so these are the concepts, or these are the equations, right? And we can also write, for example, this equation over here by dividing this equation throughout by gamma and then it would become p by gamma which is the specific weight and gamma is equal to rho g density into the gravitational acceleration plus it's going to become v square divided by 2g because rho is going to get cancelled out plus z is equal to constant along the streamline. And now all of these terms, all three of these terms in this equation uh, represent heads, types of heads. We've got the elevation term here, which is the elevation head. You've got the pressure term here. This is called the pressure head. This is the elevation head. And then you've got the velocity head here. Okay. And all of them have the units of energy per weight or length. So what does this equation tell, tell you? That, for example, if you had a pipe, then if you were looking at two different points, point 1 and point 2 over here, the sum of all of these heads, the pressure head, the velocity head, and the elevation head, would be constant along the streamline. So we could equate, for example, P1 by gamma plus uh, V2 square, uh, V1 square by 2G plus Z1 equals P2 by gamma plus V2 square by 2G plus Z2, right? And then if there were any unknown, unknowns here, we could find those out. A couple of concepts now that I would like to draw your attention to uh, need recognition of this equation and dealing with this equation. In this equation, uh, each of these terms has the dimension of force per unit area newton per meter square. The first term here, pressure, this is the actual thermodynamic pressure of the fluid, which means if you were looking at the thermodynamic tables, the pressure that you see over here is the pressure that is being used in this first term. So how do we find out what the values of uh, the pressures would be? So for example, with this first term here, like I said, it's the pressure that you see in the, ther in the actual thermodynamic uh, tables. It's the actual thermodynamic pressure of the fluid uh, as it flows. And one way to measure it would be now, for example, if we were looking at, let's say, this pipe in which we had some fluid moving in with some velocity v, if we, let's say, at this section, at this section, we drill a hole into this pipe, we attach it uh, with this opening here, then the pressure that we would be measuring at 1, that would be equal to what? pressure at 1, it will be equal to 
gamma h plus the pressure at 3, the pressure at point 3. And the h over here is going to be equal to, because we're looking at pressure at 1 in terms of pressure at 3, so the h over here is going to be h3 to 1. Okay, so pressure at 1 is equal to gamma into h3 to 1 plus p3. And this is right now we're looking at pressure of the moving fluid at this point. But for the static fluid as well, it would be the same. So it's as if the fluid were static. That's why this term is called static pressure. Okay, so the first term is known as static pressure. And we can simplify this further as well. It would become gamma h um, 3 to 1 plus, we can substitute the value of p3 here. And p3 here is going to be equal to gamma into h 4 to 3. Or we can simplify it by taking gamma as the common factor and h3 minus 1, uh, sorry, h3 to 1 plus h4 to 3, that's going to be equal to h. So it's going to be equal to gamma h. Now the second term here in Bernoulli's equation, this is known as dynamic pressure. And how do we interpret this dynamic pressure? So if you were to look at the same pipe again and we insert into this pipe a tube in such a way that it is pointing towards the flow, so the flow is flowing in this direction and this tube is pointing in the direction or in the direction of the flow opposite the direction of the flow or upstream to the flow, right? So what's going to happen? the fluid is going to flow through this pipe or through this tube and fill it up to a certain height h for example and after the initial motion has died down the fluid within this tube is going to be stationary now right it's not going to be moving anymore so the fluid within the tube is stationary un up until the point two up until the point two which is at the tip so because the fluid is stationary here, that means that the velocity at 2 is equal to 0. And this point at which the velocity becomes stationary is known as the stagnation point. So now if we apply the Bernoulli's equation between points 1 and point 2, we know that the velocity at 2 is 0. And other than that, we know that the height at 1 if it's z1, then that's equal to the height at 2, which is z2, or the elevation at 2, I should say. So this equation then would become, um, because velocity is zero, 0 at 2, so this term is going to go out for 2. This term is going to cancel out on both sides of the equation, and we're going to be left with p2 is equal to p1 plus half rho v1 squared. And what, what does this show us? That the, pr the pressure at the stagnation point is greater than the static pressure and how much by an amount of the dynamic pressure, right? This is the dynamic pressure. So stagnation point on can be found on any stationary object so if we have let's say um, we've got let's say a tennis ball and we've got air flowing alongside this tennis ball now so what's gonna happen the fluid is gonna want to move past this object but the object is solid so it would have to find a way to move past this maybe on this side or maybe on this side, but what about the uh, pressure of this fluid then? That is going to be 
uh, maximum over here at the stagnation point. And where, where is the stagnation point going to be? Where the object is stationary at the tip. So if you're ignoring the elevation effects, then the stagnation pressure is the largest obtainable pressure along a given streamline. Like I said, some of the flow is going to move over the object, some of, some of it is going to move under the object, and the dividing line in here is uh, usually known as the stagnation tree streamline, and it terminates at the stagnation point. Okay, so for symmetrical objects, the stagnation point is going to be at the tip or at the front of the object. For uh, other flow situations, uh, the stagnation point could be at a different location then. But the stagnation pressure is going to be the largest pressure obtainable along a given streamline, provided that we're ignoring the elevation effects. And now the third term in this equation this is known as the hydrostatic pressure. Why? Because it is based on the concepts of hydrostatic peri uh, pressure variation as the elevation change takes place. This hydrostatic pressure is not actually a pressure, but it only represents the change in pressure that is possible because of the potential energy variation of the fluid when the elevation changes take place. So, so we've got three terms in here, static pressure, dynamic pressure, and hydrostatic pressure. And the sum of all three of these is known as total pressure, and it's indicated by P subscript T. That's the sum of the static pressure, the dynamic pressure, and the hydrostatic pressure. And now these are important concepts because uh, what this means is that if we knew the static pressure or the dynamic pressure, or the static pressure or the stagnation pressure, then in that fluid, we can find out the fluid speed. We can calculate the fluid speed. And that is what is the basis of one such application, one such device, which is known as the pitted static tube, with the help of which we can find out fluid speeds. So for example, we could go ahead and find out um, the aircraft airspeed uh, using a pitted static probe or a pitted static tube uh, because for the pitted static tube the velocity is a function of pressure that's it okay so if we found out the pressures we would be able to find out for example the aircraft speed so the pitted static tube basically gives us a simple a relatively inexpensive um, a way of measurement, a way to measure the fluid speed, uh, but uh, there are precautions that need to be taken, care that needs to be taken, that the values are obtained uh, very accurately, especially the measurement of the static pressure, and then how you align the pitted static tube uh, within the flow, within into the flow direction, that is important as well. And we have to remember that this is only valid for incompressible flows because at high speeds when compressibility has to be taken into account that, that means density is not constant uh, other phenomena start taking place and uh, then we have to account for the shock waves as well so that's a completely different topic though so this is only valid for incompressible flows again just to review static pressure is this term this is the dynamic pressure, and you've got the hydrostatic pressure here. The stagnation pressure is this one, okay, which includes, which is a combination of the uh, static pressure and the dynamic pressure. So this is the stagnation pressure at the stagnation point. 